Recording. Okay. This, this is the clay, and we don't live in the only part of the world where it exists. Gary Klein, BlossomEra.com. He does consulting and lab analysis of your garden soil. At his age, with a few health problems, you probably should make use of his services. He is advocating, okay, so you got this biochar, you're going to make some compost, but you also need the lab analysis because what we're after is a mineral balanced soil. How else are you going to get your minerals from your garden? So he has some archives uh, and he has a newsletter and what he is saying you're going to make some biochar, well you should put some clay in it. These are fine minerals that are highly beneficial. So Gary battles back and forth with all of the gurus out there in the world and this inspired us to title this video no-till my arse. That's right. Because we know that 78% of uh, the, our environment, our air, is full of nitrogen. And plants, with their leaf pores, absorb nitrogen from the air. But if it's in the soil, it needs to be released. Anaerobic conditions that clay create are anaerobic. So... It's locked up in here. We've got to break it up. And with biochar, a pretty amazing element of carbon and the consistency of wood calcified actually creates pores, air, to get into the soil, into the clay. It's a perfect combination. It's around for... 500, 1,000 years, maybe more. So pyrolyzed wood sticks around. It doesn't disappear. It holds on to minerals because it's like a sponge. All those pores take up all your very expensive uh, sea crop, seawater nutrients. We've brought crab guts and salmon guts in here by the big forklift tote. But they're all going to disappear with the rain. So back to what, what I'm saying is Elaine Ingram, Ingram. Mm -hmm. David Montgomery, Gabe Brown, Patricia Aiken, they are all advocating for no-till, which has a bunch of climate change baloney associated with it. So what is up with these people? Are you bought and paid for? There is a need for tilling, not every year. You could get your charcoal and your minerals in 10 inches and you won't have to till maybe for 10 years. You, you can just scuffle hope the top layer. People like David the Good says, oh yeah, yeah, mulching, wood chips, yeah, yeah. But there's some problems in parts of the country. Back to Eden is in Washington State, and he is the big guru of wood chipping. But I'm 
saying that skill cult in Northern California says, yeah, I mulch with wood chips. I end up with a huge bowl problem. David the Good in Florida, Georgia, I believe, he's saying, oh, if I mulch, I end up with a variety of pest problems. So it ain't all about building it up with mulch like Back to Eden would advocate for. We want to get our charcoal in there deep and then we can just get away with uh, slicing off or slightly cultivating the, the top one inch uh, for maybe 10 years. We got the minerals from the lab analysis and then purchased at the proper balance, the, you know, it's Ratio. Know, yeah, it's known how much of these different elements need to be in the soil. So we do the analysis, we add in those increments at Gary, you know, recommendation, he does an analysis and says this much for this you know, for your square feet. So five years from now, we could do another soil test, see where we're at. But it could also be, it ends up being, oh, you, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, it's all perfect, and we could go 10 years because, you know, we're not just adding biochar, we mix it with compost and grass clippings, we let them break down, we put it in, so it's not, you know, skill cult would say, I just throw the char in there, it's all right, I, it works it all itself out for after a year or so, but no, we charge it, and the process that we're about to demonstrate is why we're advocating for not just building it up in layers. I'm well aware that the layers are all altered with tilling. And you are going to have to wait until it all balances itself out. The microbial and the ability to break down material, in other words, you chop and drop, you let, put it on the ground, it immediately is taken up by all of your amazing layers of perfect microbiotic, whatever the term is, I'm, I'm not dismissing that. I'm just saying Elaine Ingram and David Montgomery, the guru in Seattle, writing books, and Gary Klein is disagreeing and sending him letters of which you know, there's very little back and forth discussion, but uh, I'm going to say that my bucket here is getting some clay stuck in it. Yeah, there's a lot of clay here, when for I sure. Go, when I go to pull, when well that squeezes it in there, so I have this spray bottle, I'm trying 30% vinegar has Roundup in all of your vinegars, so, oh well, sorry, I'm... It's distilled. I'm not far from putting diesel in there, because that has always had a uh, very nice viscosity, and although a lot of people seem to think that any petroleum is poison, when drillers have made a huge spill out by the United States drilling wells, they come back five years later and the crops are flourishing. Petroleum is not the poison that most people insist. So I'm not far away from saying, well, I'm going to try diesel on the inside rather than 
what is that aerosol spray they sell for skillets? Pan, uh, Pam. Pam. <laughs> no Pam here. Well, but neighbors of mine have said, oh, I see your post hole digger is getting stuck with clay. Uh, here, try this, Pam. We tried it. It didn't work too bad. Okay. Anyway, we're going to demonstrate what this uh, Kubota does yeah. in the world. And then Jenna's going to do all this. Yeah. I'm going to get the 49 Speed X with a plow on it. And I'm going to cut the garden edge nice and crisp. Just like last year. And that will get mowed and in some instances uh, the weed eater, but also the propane burner along the fence because it's difficult to make the weed eater uh, tackle that kind of wire fencing. So here's Kay. a quick demonstration. Jenna's welcome to orate from a distance. Right, it's going to be loud. I'll go over here. So we're just always trying something different. kinds of soil that are categorized as either clay, silt, or sand. And the clay tends to have a lot more minerals, but like we said, they're locked up. So if you can just break it up, ideally we'll be able to work this soil to a tilt that is desirable for growing better vegetables. The garlic is looking really good. And all these panels are over the potatoes because birds ate them. And then in the back, I also have um, peas that are protective because birds, mice, everybody likes to eat them. You can see the color variation. The clay is the tan stuff. And in the past, the tiller just, you know, it's like a plow pan. And so this is very effective in lifting it all up. It is kind of shady on this left side of the garden. So last year I did really well growing lettuces. Um, they're not as, they don't need full sun. And the burdock did just fine. Burdock does fine anywhere. I plan on, um, putting some sheep sorrel in as well just to see how it fares. It's pretty much a weed but it's a medicinal weed. Wow. I was just reading, for every pound extra in excess than what your soil needs of 
nitrogen fertilizer, it burns up hundreds of millions of organisms because they just jump on it. Keeps them busy, it depletes the soil in that way. So the proper ratio, like I said before, 10.4 to 1 of 10.4 nitrogen to one part carbon is a good combination. And I would say over the past couple of years, we might have, you know, I don't know, 2% of the soil has char in it, maybe less. We're working on it. This is a thousand square feet. And our fencing keeps the deer out three guide wires of steel above four feet of deer fencing. So the bunnies still get in, but the deer do not jump over those wires. The posts are black locust, rot resistant. This is a very useful tool. For how old we are, um, shovels and pitchforks doing this sort of work would be very painful. I have, this like greenhouses right here, tomato starts, sheep sorrel, artichokes, lettuces, uh, cilantro, garden crust, all the onions are back there, like I said, and there's some chives. Well done, Brian. Nothing compared to what Jenna's going to do, but it's not going to be on camera. I'm going to go put that fuel filter on the 49 speed X. Excellent. Thank you for watching. I hope you're um, appreciative and you got something out of this video. Goodbye.